Hi! I'm not in my studio. That's because this video is not about making a painting. When I finish a painting, I like to put a layer of resin on it to preserve and protect my work. But this video is actually not about putting resin on a painting either. This video is about where I put resin on a painting. This is my resin tent. Yeah, I know, I know. It's a strange photo, but let me explain how and why I made it, and hopefully this will all make sense. My friend Joel has a brilliant technical mind. He's worked on the crew of these Broadway musicals, doing everything from being a production carpenter to props to automation. So I presented him with the idea of designing a resin tent where I could apply the resin to my finished paintings. I needed it to be tall enough for me to stand in, keep it relatively dust free, and also to be able to move it and take it down if I needed to. So Joel helped me figure out the materials I needed and I got to work. It started with four 10 foot, three quarter inch PVC pipes, as Joel explained, lightweight and easy to move. Then I cut those down into three foot segments that gave me the 12 pieces I needed to make my resin cube. Now, if you are exceptionally good at math, you have figured out that I had four one-foot pipes left over. Congratulations. And remember that for later. I put the pieces all together, not permanently, with the three-way connectors. This gave me the structure for my cube. I was, <laughs> I was feeling very proud of my work that day until I figured out that I needed to take the entire thing apart in order to get it out of my studio and move it into the room where it would live. Yeah, I, I'm not so smart. <laughs> Once in the room, I needed to cover it with this, plastic sheeting. This was going to help me keep the dust out. So I measured the amount I needed to cover the cube, and then I cut, tucked, and taped the sheeting to the frame of the cube. Then, to keep out as much dust as possible, I added a two-step doorway. There was a piece of sheeting with an opening, and then another piece of sheeting covering the opening, so any dust that enters the cube is going to be dust that I bring in. No dust from the room will find its way inside. For safety, I also added a vent in the top of the cube at the back. Since using a butane torch is an important step during the resin process, ventilation is really important. I made these L-shaped brackets out of stir sticks, taped them to the top crossbar at the back of the cube, cut a hole in the roof of the cube, and then draped another piece of sheeting over the hole and over the brackets. The brackets are just to keep the cover sheeting elevated so there can be some circulation out of the hole in the roof and out into the room. Fumes can go out, no dust can find its way in. Does that make sense? Now, back to those four one foot leftover PVC segments. I went back to the hardware store again, thanks to Joel's suggestion, got some plywood, screws, and some flanges. That's a flange, by the way. Who knew that it was called a flange? Joel did, yes. I put the PVC pipes in the flanges, screwed the flanges to the plywood, and made a work table to work on multiple resin projects at the same time inside of my new fancy resin tent. <laughs> Yay! So that's it. Simple, right? No, it was a lot of work, but this resin tent is where I'll put the finishing touches on all of my paintings. In the next video, I'll show you step by step how I resin a painting in my new resin tent. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.